and welcome to chapter 5 of Fantasy Knits, A Traveling Knitter. Thanks for joining me today. Um, if my voice sounds a little different, it's because of allergies. I know in my last podcast I mentioned that I had been sick. Well, I have been struck down with allergies pretty bad. I'm on several medications to help me get through the day as well as sleep. Um, for those of you with bad allergies, I'm sure that you, you deal with the same thing, that you just can't sleep. If you lay down, everything just congests and you start coughing and you have a hard time breathing. So that's the boat I'm in. <clears throat> so uh, if you see a lot of cuts, that's because I'm trying to cut out all of the coughing and the clearing of my throat so that this podcast is a little bit nicer for you to listen to. It's maybe a rather long podcast, more because I have a huge, huge haul. And what's so awesome about the haul is that I did not buy almost any of it. Um, I bought two, I have purchased two skeins of yarn that I'm going to show you. And I actually purchased them before the last podcast. They just had not arrived. So I have a very large haul uh, that I will get to. But without further ado, let me show you some of the quests that I am currently on. Um, I think two of them will be new. Yes, two will be new. One that you've seen before. And, um, I'm, so I haven't made any progress on my Ginny sweater cardigan, so I'm not going to show you that. I also haven't done anything with Raina because, um, I'm looking for a single ply black, which I think I talked about in the last podcast, but I haven't worked on that one either because, I don't know, I just, I'm not even ready for the black, but I'm holding off on it. So what I do want to show you is, I guess I'll start with the one you've already seen before. It is in this like purse. I was going through my purses and wanting to get rid of some and I realized I can use these as project bags. There, now I don't have to get rid of them. So in this guy, which I, I'm so terrible, but I saw it at Walmart I think and I asked my dad to buy it for me when he was there. This was like maybe 10 years ago. And I literally used it maybe twice. I don't know, it's meh, it's cute, but I'm like in my mid 20s. I, I, I should have like professional things now. So anyway, this is my Miller's Daughter. Ooh, by Melanie Berg. Okay. And I've made quite a lot of progress on this. So here it is. And it is looking so awesome. So you can even see, like you can really see it now, those stripes coming in. And here's that lace work. What I'm probably going to end up doing, because again, I mean, I've got a lot of yarn for this. I'm probably going to extend the stripe sections as well as extend the lace and then in the original pattern you use three colors so the last lace portion is the third color I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna keep going with this lace because it looks just so awesome can you just like let's just imagine for a moment it's gonna be amazing now my biggest complaint and I really started to work on that is <coughs> excuse me this this edge right here I've been slipping so it's it's pretty clean and very stress stretchy this side I just can't I can't slip it because this is where the two color change happens so it just ends up being super tight if I slip it so I've been knitting it and trying to make it super loose and I don't know it's definitely just not stretchy on this side Otherwise, I'm super happy with it so far. The lace work isn't intuitive. It kind of just looks like a bunch of holes. I mean, when I look at it, I definitely see a pattern, but in general, it just looks like a bunch of holes. So, oh well. But 
I, it's turning in I mean it looks beautiful I think and I honestly would not mind making this again and I'm not even like this might be like 10% of this uh, I think if I made it again I might not use the hedgehog fiber lace because this is really thin it's almost like I don't know it's cobweb a, a one but it's a two ply but it is so thin so thin it's not bad when I'm working on it on its own but then when I'm switching between that and the single whatever that this is this is just just a little smidge thicker and I like this one better but the hedgehog color is beautiful it's awesome my favorite parts are the rust orange if that's gonna focus maybe but there's a rust orange piece like right here that's my favorite part so yeah I've been working on that um, I work on that when I'm watching TV or I don't have TV but when I'm watching Netflix or something that's the one I've been working on now it used to be in this bag but I switched this out because I started a new pair of socks because I finished the last pair and I'll show that to you in, com in uh, completed quests but this guy right here oh I didn't oh yes I did <laughs> never mind so this guy right here and it is on my Chowgu ones or 2.25 millimeter and I just have the, the cuff and I just started uh, the setup row for the cable section. The yarn is Knit Picks in the Hawthorne Fingering in the Laurelhurst colorway. It is an 80% superwash highland wool, 20% polyamide nylon plastic, 357 yards, uh, 100 grams. So, working with Knit Picks, here is the cake. It's greens, uh, tannish browns, and then some like emerald green, which is my favorite part. And the pattern comes out of the Soctopus book, and Al it's by Alice Yu. And the one that I am knitting is called do, 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 do. there it is it is called farmer mcgregor and here is a picture of it so it's got some cable crossing and then the cuff for the heel looks pretty cool Let's see if i can show that to you without a lot of the pattern so the heel looks pretty neat and um, this is my June sock, so I'll be entering it into the Grocery Girls um, sock cow. And their theme is like fathers or the men in our lives. And uh, <laughs> so I might make it for my dad. I'm not sure. I've knit him a pair of socks and I've seen him wear them on Christmas when I gifted it to him but I don't know if he actually wears them so I don't know if I'm going to make them for him or I'll just make it for myself but I am doing something a little different something I've noticed with the socks that I've made I've I've done them in I think 64 stitches yeah 64 that seems good and they're just they're kind of tight along my calves the, the uh, cast on edge is just always a little too tight. So when I wear them, it's not that they're cutting off the circulation, but they leave a line because they're stretched at full capacity. I'm not a big person, um, but I did play soccer and I still do. So my calves are honestly just a smidge smaller than my thighs. I have really, really large calves and that's not me saying that I'm fat or anything no I'm just saying proportionately my calves are larger I think than the average person so again 
64 stitches on a size one is just a little bit too tight and like I wear like a size seven in shoes so just you know size wise my calves are just a little bit larger than the average human which is fine so I switch it up and with this pattern since it has those cables all throughout the sock you could either cast on 64 72 or 80 I decided to cast on 72 and I don't know because I'm constantly changing my yarn but look how much these stretch so I'm worried that these are too big I don't know this is the struggle I'll, I put it on they like you know came up fine but maybe we'll see when I get further honestly if they end up being too big I'm not ripping them out I'm gonna give them to my dad or something I think my dad's calves are smaller than mine so that might not be a good decision I doubt my brothers will wear hand knit socks <laughs> My mom would, but again, her calves are smaller than mine. Who knows, maybe they'll be fine. I don't know until it's finished. But either way, um, my opinions on the Knit Picks yarn. I am a big fan of Knit Picks. I think Knit Picks is great. It's affordable. It's kind of, mm, it, in college, the only kind of yarn that I really knew about was big box yarn. And then I discovered Knit Picks and just all of the colors and the styles and the sizes of yarn that they had and needles. And it was like the door opened for me. Oh my gosh, I can afford this. Uh, because in college, you know, I did have a job, a part-time job. I made almost no money because... I was going for two degrees and two minors at the same time in a four year span, plus all of the, you know, you have to do something in college. You can't just go to class and go to work. You do need to join some clubs and stuff. Uh, so with work, I put in, I think maybe on average, eight, six or eight hours a week. That's, I mean, now looking at how much I work, that's pretty pathetic, but that's about as much as I could handle. Uh, so, you know, my paychecks were really small and they covered going out and stuff. So, yeah, I don't have to ask my parents for, for money, for fun, uh, just for the rent. So, um, so Knit Picks being an option is great. I don't buy as much Knit Picks anymore. Um, I've been getting some because I've been toying with designing and I thought, you know, Knit, knit Picks is relatively cheap and if I fuck it up, who cares? I only spent like 10 bucks on it and it looks nice. Knit Picks is pretty good yarn. But this guy is very stiff. It's it's almost like it's hard, which might soften up when I block it or wash it, but as I'm knitting it, it's very stiff and almost plasticky feeling. Now, that's not terrible, like it doesn't bother me, but it's definitely not as soft as the yarn I was just knitting on, which was some hand dyed yarn. So. This guy is just a little bit stiffer, but it's okay. The color is turning out really pretty, I think, with those greens and the browns and the not focusing. I swear, like, I bought this expensive camera, not just for podcasting, but for pictures and stuff, and it takes the longest time to focus. So now it's going to take forever to focus on my face. There we go. And the viewfinder's over there. I try not to look at it, but it happens. So yeah, that is my Farmer McGregor socks for the month of June. There are a lot of sock cows going on right now. Cause you've got the Grocery Girls monthly one. You have Wool and Vines full year one, which is essentially a monthly, but you know, have 12 socks in a box at the end of the year. And then you have 
Amber of the Yarn Hoarder podcast who is doing a Socks for Dobby cowl, which I think it's just make socks. <laughs> um, so there's a lot that, you know, you can stick your socks in, in at least three cowls. And then in between you had second so you have second socks of summer which is coming up for grocery girls and then candace of pin feathers and pearls had her stripy socks cal dose uh which that finished like a month or two ago but either way there's so many cows revolving around socks and sometimes that's the only reason why i knit socks i like wearing them but i like bigger things i don't mind knitting them they're just not my favorite thing I know. Terrible. Alright, and the third and last quest that I'm currently on is, it is also something that I just started, and funny enough, it's Knit Picks, and it is the In Touch Gloves, and they look like that. My mom got this pattern, or kit, for me several years ago, and I had kept it all together in a box you know, with the intention of making them. And I was just kind of going through my stash and thinking, there are a ton of boxes with, like, they're not started, but they're planned projects where you could almost call them kits. But I put them together, wrote on the front what it's going to be, and just haven't made them. And I kind of want to really work on my stash and get rid of, not rid of, but use up a lot of yarn. I used to do a lot of crafting for craft shows and stuff, and I don't do that as much anymore. So a lot of my yarn is more economy, um, not the best quality, which that's fine. I don't mind knitting with it, but it's taking up too much space. I want to start having, you know, all the yarn for me be that selfish, who cares? So I wanted to work on these gloves. And funny enough, when I first got this, I thought, ooh, awesome. But I didn't feel confident enough in doing all of this. I thought this was gonna be color work. So I started this project. I have a habit of starting projects and not reading the pattern fully. I just kind of, I think it's cause I don't wanna psych myself out and being confused. So I just take everything line by line not literally line by line, but you know, section by section. So I started working on this and I am this far. So I've got cuff and then the tops, right? So I'm starting the thumb gusset right here. And so I'm knitting and I'm like, when's the blue coming in? It's not, it's all double stitching or what is that called? It's, it's just duplicate stitching. I, I started a project two years ago called the Kitten Mittens uh, for my roommate at the time. And my coworkers were super excited about it because they thought it looked awesome. And that had duplicate stitching on it. And I hated it. Like really hated it. So I'm kind of disappointed. I thought it was going to be color work. Cause now that I'm comfortable with color work, I was totally fine to do this, but it's not, it's double stitching or it's duplicate stitching. So I just have to be careful because I like to increase and decrease where the pattern doesn't tell me to do that. Um, and that's what really messed up my double stitching because it was like, you know, supposed to be a, a, a square rectangle area in the pattern but I had decreased and increased so it didn't line up. They weren't even. So I was like trying to fudge where the stitches are and it was just frustrating. And I don't know, like I had the glove done and it took an hour maybe to knit. And then the double stitching was taking hours and hours. I'm still not even done with the first glove. I'm probably never going to work on it ever again, <laughs> to be honest. It's sitting actually back here in a box. Um, so double stitching, not my favorite, kind of disappointed, but we'll see. So I was knitting on this at a 
a volunteer thing that I'll talk about at the end or with something else. So I didn't have anything to measure and it said go four inches and I don't know, I think this is probably not four inches, but I was ready because I think it's gonna be like this and I didn't want it to go too far down. Also, uh, I needed, I needed um, smaller or larger needles and I didn't have them so I cast on with the small size and then I increased to the medium size and the same uh, needle size. So my gloves are size small here to medium for the rest of it. Hopefully that'll work. I tried this on earlier just to make sure because this looks like super tiny. But I tried it on and it fit. So we'll see. My stitch markers are super cute. They are little skulls. Oh god, if only it would focus. Just focus on the skulls, please. Do it for me. I, I give up. I've literally held this to the camera for probably 30 seconds and it's not, it's not zooming in. So it's not focusing, whatever. Fine, you win camera, you win. But the stitch markers are from the Yarnick Arts. Sorry, I just perped. They're from the Yarnick Arts by Heather, uh, who is on Facebook as the Yarnick Arts, and H Brady or Brady99 at Etsy dot Etsy dot com. And this is her tag. Uh, maybe or maybe not. It will focus. There we go. So really nice. And again, I got that from my swap partner in the Notorious Swap package. Uh, from the Toad Hollows. It's also in my Toad Hollows bag. Boop. The yarn that I'm using, obviously the pattern came from Knit Picks, so the yarn I uh, am using is also Knit Picks because it came with it. And it's just a Knit Picks Stroll Fingering. And this one is in the colorway Wonderland Heather. It's just a a very nice light blue and it is a heather and then this one I don't have the ball band but it's uh, like a dark gray maybe it says on here yes it is ash how nice they wrote the yarns right there wonderful so that is what I'm currently working on I know it's like 85 degrees where I am and I'm working on gloves but hey that's what I wanted to start. So those are my current quests that I am on right now. And I do want to show you my one finished quest. And they are completely finished. And those are my socks. They look so awesome. So I did a uh, contrast toes and cuffs. And I did the Hermione Everyday Socks by Erica Luter. And I did the, I think these are the Aya Partridge heel. I actually really like this heel. I like it more than the Fish Lips Kiss heel. So I just, I really like the design that it does. It just looks so cool. The yarn that I used, and I've mentioned this several times, but I'll do it again, was in the Lost City Knits in their Calliope colorway. It's their Pathway Sock Merino, or Superwash Merino, 385 yards, 110 grams, and I got it a very, very long time ago, lostcitynets.com, and I think they're still around. So, super excited, and the reason why I said completely done is because there are no ends. I wove the ends in! Uh, so I was working on these at work. This past week we had uh, team meetings and so it was pretty exciting because I got to meet everybody on the team. I've mentioned several times that um, I travel for work and so we have people posted or positioned all around the country so you don't normally see some of these people. Like I'm the east coast so I, I do a lot of east coast stuff and then you've got people on the west coast who i never ever ever see <laughs> like i 
know their name, but I don't even know what they look like. So it was pretty cool to, to meet everybody and talk about how long we've been with the company and things like that. And I finished my socks and did not have anything else to knit, so I just wove in the ends right then and there, which was awesome because then uh, my coworkers were pretty excited and I tried the socks on for them. So I had the socks on and they're like, ooh, those are really cool, which that made me feel really good. Most of them, most of them know that I knit and just, it's nice when they get excited too about some of the stuff. So I'm really happy with these. These are probably my favorite socks that I have so far. Um, and I think they are my first ever uh, indie dyed yarn sock that I am keeping for myself. So these are really special. I really like the colors. Purple is my favorite color, if I haven't mentioned this before. Pink, not so much, but I really like the, the deep purple in here. And gray is my favorite neutral. And I didn't, I didn't mention it this time, but this gray is from, uh, she changed her name. I looked it up and then I forgot it again. It's probably in my show notes from the previous episode, but, uh, she used to be Lunar Stitches, so in my mind that's what I remember her as, so. It's, th this yarn was thinner than the rest of it, but I don't think that's a big deal. So yeah, got a whip. Or a finished, completed quest. Pretty excited about. The next thing I want to talk about is going to take up a, pretty much the rest of this episode, and that is my haul. And before I get to it, the kind of the first thing I want to talk about are pattern books. So I uh, volunteered this week, uh, this weekend, at my local library. We have a, a semi-annual book sale. And it was eye-opening. So I was there for, uh, what was it? nine hours. This is a nine hour volunteer shift. I did not realize it was going to be that long because uh, it ate up my entire Saturday, but that's okay. I walked out with quite a lot of books and they were selling them for a dollar each, which I thought was really great. So, you know, I did a quick walk through and I grabbed like eight books and, you know, paid eight bucks for them. Um, and I, I got some DVDs as well. And what was really cool about it was just, there was a lot of stuff that was brand new too. So when a library purchases brand new books or DVDs or whatever, you know, they'll buy, if you're in a, like a larger system, they'll buy like 50 of them. But then after a year or so, when the demand isn't as high, they get rid of them because they just, there just isn't enough space for all of those books that exist in this world. So with my library and several library systems all around the world or all around the United States, I can at least attest for, we'll do library sales. And, um, it's, it's great. I definitely recommend going, um, cause there's a ton of like knitting books too that you can find and only pay a dollar for them. And while I was there, you know, it's interesting to see the different people. There were some people who would come in and literally buy hundreds of books. We counted, I personally didn't count the books because I was a different counter, but counted nine boxes of books. And then you had this one dude that had his like scanner. He was going around scanning the books to see if they were worth anything. Um, so you just, and then you had the, the people who brought in their families and you had kids that are like, okay, you can pick five books. So here's your $5, which I thought was just awesome because books can be kind of expensive and to be able to get five books for $5 for a kid is pretty awesome. So I thought it was really great. The only thing that was, that made me really sad was at the end. So our, I live in my town, Dayton, is not really a town, it's, uh, it's definitely a city. I think uh, there's about 700,000 people in the greater Dayton area. So my library system is, is fairly large. It's large for me, large, large for my opinion. And we had thousands and thousands of books, a lot. And at the end of it, 
it all got recycled. People were, you just threw them into these boxes and then the boxes were taken away to get recycled, which was really hard to watch. As a book lover, it hurt my soul to just see all these books thrown into a box, but there's just nowhere to store it. You know, I, I, this is the first time I've ever volunteered, you know, I was the new kid. They made me feel really welcome. You know, everyone kept saying my name and appreciating that I was there, but I didn't know if I was allowed to just rescue more books because I did pay for some of them, but then the rest of them were just getting donated. And so I felt really weird about, you know, taking them. I, I made like a little pile of the books that I wanted and then I just let them get recycled. So that was really sad. It was sad for me, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it was thousands of books. And some of them were kind of like manuals from the 80s, like textbooks from the 90s. So there were some stuff that it's like, no one's really going to take that. But there were books that were fairly new and books that I wanted. So it was just interesting. And I know that was a very long blurb about it, but my... My advice to all of you viewers who like to read and like pattern books is when you see those sales, go to them and don't plan that it's going to be an in and out kind of thing because those sales take a lot of time to set up because you have to get all these books and lay them out on a table and most of the time people aren't organizing them. So it, I mean, you literally feel like you have to look at every book, but I think that's part of the fun. We had a lot of people, not a lot, but we have a couple people who were like, why don't you organize this? And it's like, we're all volunteers. Every single person there is not getting paid to do that. And to set up that book fair or that book sale took hours. You know, tear down is normally quicker. Tear down, we didn't even get all the books out. Tear down took two hours. And all that was, was moving the boxes under the tables and then throwing the books into large boxes. And that took two hours and there were probably 25 volunteers. So to organize it, to organize it would probably take, I would say at least 30 hours. So you're not gonna find stuff organized, but really long drawn out speech, basically for me to show you the knitting books that I found. And actually I didn't even find most of these. The uh, couple that I was working with, uh, so I sat at a table counting books. When people would come up, we would count their books, give them a slip of paper, and then they'd pay behind us. But the couple next to me um, noticed that I was knitting. We talked about it, and I it was like her personal goal to find me knitting books. And so when I was leaving at the end of the day, I come back to my table where my purse was, and she had put like a little stack of knitting books next to it. And I thought that was just so sweet of her. Um, so. Granted, one of them I already had, so I'm going to ask my friend and see if she wants it, but like full price, it's like a $25 book, so. All right, so um, they're all library editions, so I'm, I'm going to end up cutting the like plastic thing off of it, and a lot of them are old, but this one is called 100 Knitting Projects, and I will say most of the projects are kind of ugly, but there are some cool things in here. Um... It's by Jean Leinhauser and Rita Wise. I'm assuming they made all the patterns, but like this one right here. I thought this one was really cool. I might switch out the colors, maybe do like blue or something, but that would be really nice. Um, there were, there's like a, you know, a simple hat that you could make. And then there's some pretty ugly, like, real ugly like what the hell is that she just looks like she's wearing a fuzzy trash bag i bet this came out in the 90s let me look maybe 80s <laughs> um oh my goodness 2006 what people were designing stuff that looked like this in 2006 like what is that this poor girl. Where did you find this yarn? So yeah, um, the little princess looks like a snow monster. Like what is this? 
It's bulky yarn. Ugh. No, I'd never make that. Not unless my child asked for it, and then I would steer them in a different direction. So yeah, um, you know, most of the stuff isn't that great, but there's some gems in here, and for a dollar, it's it's worth it. It's a dollar. And my money went to a good cause. Went to the library. I also or she also found me a companion one. Same same designers. It's called 100 Purses to Knit and Crochet. I have not looked this one over. I'm not big into knitting and crocheting purses, so I don't know if I'll use this one. I might just give it or uh, give it a new home or donate it or something. I'll have to look at it and see. Oh, this is actually cute. As soon as I say I'm not going to use it, there's like a little bear. A little bear purse. That's a cutie. Looks like it's made out of Chanel. Ugh. I would probably, well, I guess for a kid that might be nice. But I don't think I would knit it out of Chanel. That wouldn't be awesome. Maybe there's a farmer's market bag or something like that in here. So yeah, got another one. They're pretty hefty. I, she also found me this one, which is New Knits on the Block. I have seen this book before, uh, but it is all full of, like, fantasy uh, patterns for children. So, like, the Hawaiian dress-up. And there was a knight or something, or a viking. Yeah. So, there's, like, a little viking outfit. I probably will pass this one on as well because I don't have any kids and I don't plan on having any kids in any near the future. So, and these are all like costumes for kids. There aren't any sweaters or anything, so I really would not use this. Um, so, I will probably donate this to someone who would. Now, the other book, the one that I said I already have, is uh, Twinkle's Big City Knits, which is by Wenlin Chai, or Chia, uh, and it's 31 Chunky Chic Designs. I have this book, and I was so obsessed with getting this book when I first started knitting, um, and I have made this guy right here. Not in the stripes, I made it in one color, but I have made this tunic sweater, and I've actually worn it to work a couple times, and... Um, it was definitely the first th the first sweater I ever made, and it's not the best, but I I'm, I can attest I still wear it, so that counts. A lot of the things in here, I don't know if it's the pictures, but they just don't look that flattering. Now this one I think would be something that I would make. It's the Twiggy tunic, but again, it's made out of like extra bulky. Uh, yarn so it's yeah 10 stitches equals 4 inches so it's very very thick and I think if I made it I would probably modify it to be out of thinner yarn so uh, again I will and here's another one this is called the best friend cardigan I like this one too uh, but it, I think again I would probably just not do it as so bulky so this guy right here, uh, yes, regular price is $32.50. So these, uh, and it's, Twinkle has more patterns, and from what I remember, they're not written super well. There's some, there's a lot of errors in them, just like with mine, but you can normally find the, uh, the fixed versions online. So I'll probably ask my friend if she would like to have this copy. I will cut the plastic away and then it'll look fantastic for her. Now the last book, which I'm actually kind of excited about, is this one right here. And I know I just said I don't have any kids, but this one's called Pick the Pieces. And isn't she just super adorable? She's my favorite. If you go through this book, there's several children in here. Like there's this cute little boy. But this red-headed girl is so cute like she poses really nicely ah so adorable little redhead she's my fave if I could have a fave of child like look at her she's just like yep this is me I'm a model so cute but what I really like about this is that you've got um 
different options. So they go through how to make different sweaters. And then at the end, um, okay, there's fronts, chapter two, edging. Okay, so this whole back section is the same kind of thing, but you've got all of the different pattern pieces from all of the sweaters previously. And they're all laid out and then you can, just like it says, pick the piece that you want, which I think is really cool. You've got fronts, different fronts, different sleeves, different pockets, different edging, different appliques or things that you can knit onto the sweater, uh, different like neck features, different cardigan finishes. Um, and then, you know, it even like, again, does a close up on the edgings that you have available. And some of the sweaters are, you know, not that awesome, but there's some really good standard child sweaters in here. So like, I think, I think, I, I think I showed this one, but this one's a really cute one. So he's got his little applique on it. I don't think that's a pocket. I think that's just a uh, part of the sweater, but it looks really cool. And I feel like this is going to be a really good way for me to use up some of my uh, acrylic yarn. Uh, so pick up the pieces by Lorna Miser. Follow the patterns or simply plan your own featuring this adorable little redhead girl. So those are the knitting books that I picked up at the library, the book sale. And I highly recommend, you know, checking out yours. Uh, a lot of times if you, if you go onto your library's website, they might say, or you can just ask someone um, if they know when the sale is. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is my haul. And I'm already feeling overwhelmed just looking at it. It's in a bag that I haven't taken out. So this is it. Yes. 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 So a little background story on this haul that I think I started and never finished. Oops. I went to my friend's uh, housewarming party. We had a sleepover and it was awesome. Yes, I'm in my mid-20s, but I love sleepovers. So we watched uh, Castle in the Sky, Howl, Castle in the Sky, Howl's Moving Castle and My Neighbor Totoro. My Neighbor Totoro is my personal favorite Studio Ghibli movie. I watch it probably once every two months. Uh, that's how much I love it. And uh, one of my college friends was there, which is just so awesome. So the friends, the, uh, the owner of the house, the housewarming party friend that I went to, I have known since I was in high school. So uh, we were in band together. Uh, so we were, we've been friends for a while and she moved away so we just haven't seen her and you know she finally got this house and she's like come over let's have a housewarming party and I was like yes so get there and she had said oh is it okay if I invite my friend Chloe and we're like uh I know her from college we were in the same knitting club together uh so that was super awesome to be able to you know reconnect with an old college friend and that my old friend is friends with my college friend, which is awesome. So the only sad thing was uh, my college friends, Omi had recently passed away and she was a huge knitter and apparently a yarn hoarder like all of us are when we are in the knitting craft, crochet craft or fiber craft or whatever you want to say. So she brought just boxes and boxes of yarn. Those like, huge what 32 gallon the huge ones the very large boxes and she brought three and she said I think that she, I think she said she had eight at, like total insane so we went through and found a lot of goodies and oh it's just so exciting so I'm going to take some of it out because some of that did not come from her. Some of these things don't have ball bands or anything, but for the most part, a lot of this is really good yarn. Uh, I grabbed this Tweed Cascade 20. It is blue and does it have a colorway? No, but it is a very deep navy blue with tweed rainbow. Uh, tweed bits of sky blue, white, red, and yellow, and then a greenish yellow. 
This I think would make for really nice gloves. So I grabbed that. Plus I have a ton of Cascade 220 pattern books that, you know, if I have the yarn, awesome. I grabbed these guys. I don't know what it is, but I love it. It's also tweed and the natural color is like a, a pale oatmeal and then the tweed is a bright green, an orange, some flecks of purple, and then a brightish green. And oh, this just looks awesome. So I have, this was already a started project and I just unwound it and then this one's actually, it's not as large as it looks. Um, it's very light and I believe it's a center pool ball if I can just find the center. So pretty excited about this. Don't know what I'm going to make with it because um, I really don't know how much of it there is. I got quite a lot of sock yarn because she had a lot of sock yarn and out of my friends I'm like the only one who actually makes any socks so I got to walk away with a lot of sock yarn. Uh, this one right here I thought was very interesting. It's called Trekking. Uh, Trekking Stripes and it's in German actually which is kind of exciting it's browns tans and then like a cream color uh, this looks like coffee to me I'm not a big coffee drinker but I thought you know maybe my dad would like it or my mom would like it because it's kind of a manly color I manly it's neutral everyone likes neutral so it's 75% superwash 25% nylon uh, made in Germany 100 grams 459 yards um, oh for best effect knit with alternate skeins well I don't have alternate skeins and I'm only gonna make some socks out of these so I don't need to but that's interesting because this looks like you know a big box yarn but interesting I also grabbed some soles and more sensation so this guy, if you remember, I made purple socks back in January out of the same brand. Mine was Bamboo and Ooh, but this is for you. This is just 75-25 wool and nylon in uh, America, right? Yeah, completely. So I already have plans for this, and here's what it's going to look like. Here's the, the picture. But for July, um, for the uh, sock cows, I'm going to make these because I live in America. July is uh, 4th of July. <laughs> it's our Independence Day. Uh, another sock yarn that I got is this guy. It's already caked up. And so I can't really tell what the colors are, but it's very fuzzy. It's dark gray, navy, there's some like rust, russet red colors. Uh, and this is Misty Alpaca, which I think I purchased Misty Alpaca. I want to say there's a gray up there that's Misty Alpaca that I made as a hat. And the hat is like way too big, so I need to undo it and redo it. Ugh. So this is 50% alpaca, 30% merino wool, 10% silk, 10% nylon. And... Uh, this also does not have a colorway. The color is 12. So this is like super fuzzy and I don't know how I feel about having alpaca in my socks. I don't know. So I got it because I liked it. Um, another one that I got that's already caked up now this is not fingering, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, maybe make a hat. But this is Willow Wood hand painted yarn about 250 yards from willowwoodpond.com. Never heard of them, but here it is. It's a blue and purple. I can show this side. So it's blue and purple, uh, might make a hat out of it, not sure, but looks cool. And the purple is a very like deep purple a wine purple okay I'm trying to like find the yarn I'm talking offside I'm trying to find the yarn or the skeins that are together we'll do Noro next 
So also there was a bag of Noro and my friends were like, ugh, we don't like Noro. And I'm like, what? I'll take the Noro. Who cares if it's scratchy? It's beautiful. So I got quite a lot of Noro. Um, well, not quite. I mean, yes, it was free. So I'm going to say quite a lot. And all of the bands are coming off. So that's kind of annoying. I might like tape them all together. But this is Silk Garden. What? Ugh, Noro kind of confused me. I think it's Silk. I think this is Silk Garden. I think this is... I think these match. Ugh, this is difficult. Yeah. Okay, so these two match right here. It's a mauve, uh, like, hay green, yellow, and then a darker, like tannish green so there's that I don't know what I'll make with it but it's Noro Noro is expensive so I wanted to no one else is gonna take it so I took it and then I have three of this guy which is very colorful and this is Shinano it's blues teals dark blue uh, orange a lot of pink and then like a like a greenish brown throughout the whole thing so there's that guy and then there's one of crayon crayon it's like crayon uh, and this one is like ombre style so purple to green to yellow to orange so those are the Noros I have another sock yarn uh, that did not come with a ball band or anything and uh, it's like deep deep jewel tones so very deep blues purples and greens I have no idea what this is but I saw it and I said yes please <coughs> oh I have another Noro this is more of the silk garden I found uh, Peyton's Croy socks uh, in the FX, and it is in the Cascade colors, which is just blues. So that's pretty nice. I know what to expect with that. Oh, more Noro. <laughs> this is more Silk Garden, and this is definitely my colors. Uh, she also had this Fortissima sock, uh, Scholler and Stahl, also German, 50 grams, um, and it's just in black. Um, this was the only one, but I nabbed it for heels, toes, and cuffs. There was also one of this guy, which is Claudia Hand Painted Yarns, fingering weight, 100% merino wool, in the Ocean Depth colorway. It's 50 grams, 175 yards, so maybe I'll make some shorty socks out of it, but really pretty. It's um, kind of pastel blues, teals, and uh, bits of green and purple. I uh, grabbed one of these mini mochis from Crystal Palace Yarn. I think I, I think there's only one, maybe? <clears throat> Yeah, I think there's only one. If there, if there's more, I'll show it again. Um, but it's this guy, which is a single ply, purple, well, it's pretty much just blue. 80% wool, 20% nylon. Again, no idea what I'll make with this, but it was pretty. And then there was also a Classic Elite Yarns Liberty, Liberty Wool, 100% wool, um, 50 grams, about 122 yards. This guy... Which I thought was also really pretty. I want to say I have some Liberty Wool and white to make socks. Then I also found this guy, Classic Elite Yarns in Miracle, which is 50% alpaca and 50% tencel. Uh, and it's a like a grayish blue. I think her Omi had a, a favorite yarn and it was alpaca because almost all of us walked away with a ton of alpaca. Uh, I found another sock, which was called Ditto Knit Relax Smile Repeat from Uni Universal Yarn, 
in the who knows because we don't name our colorway colorway I just I really liked it it's just black red and a little bit of gray I thought that was really pretty uh, oh perfect so this guy is this guy so I, I actually have two yay so I can make whole sock or a whole pair of socks and then this guy I do not know what this is but it's uh, again just muted purples and greens fingering no idea what it is oh and I believe this is another mini mochi so I do have two. Oh, and I lied there is another black uh, there was this guy which I think this is the only one of it but I just really liked this it's yellows reds teals and uh, like a jean blue applied with a, a white so that looked really cool and I have another one of the black red and gray there was this vintage wool by Barocco and it's uh, just in black and that's uh, 100 grams 217 yards and she had two of these creatively dyed 100% superwash merino about a thousand yards uh, lace weight yarn so she had this one and then she had it skeined up ready to go and so I and my friend took we each took one because um, I feel like I could make a small cardigan or something out of a thousand about a thousand yards of lace weight so nice okay so lastly or not lastly but I also got this hayfield kimono yarn and it is okay what what the hell are you 95% acrylic 5% silk and it's 141 yards and it's just in this cream color and I got one two three four five six of them oh I thought I had more yeah I guess I only got six of them but um, I thought you know I could probably again make a small sweater with this the rest does not have ball bands or anything I don't, oh, this one does. This is, I don't know, Maratona Extra Fine Wool. Looks like this. And I got several of these, but in different colors. To just, uh, oh, that's different. But to make something, I thought, you know, they could go together and make something really nice. And then I found this white to go with it and then another natural color so that is all the yarn <laughs> we're not done yet but that is all the yarn that my friend uh, so graciously let us devour and two of the people that were at the party don't knit one like crochets a bit but she doesn't do as much crafting as the rest of us and so they just got to sit and watch us pig out and uh, probably a little boring but you know they're just talking like that's a lot of money that's just sitting there and I'm like I know I know I mean just the lace yarn itself I think the tag said it was $40 so we got a lot of yarn and just so amazing and uh, kind of like her reasoning she'd said you know as knitters we know what's worth what's what something's worth and it's just nice to give it to somebody who's going to use it instead of trying to make money off of it you know kind of like the book sale the book sale is for people who normally can't afford books so don't buy it to sell it again that's my biggest beef about Black Friday it's for people who can't afford stuff don't go out and buy five TV so that you can make money off of it. That's not the point. Okay, so some of the other 
yarn that I got, um, my mom bought for me when it was on sale. More sock yarn. So she got me the Patton's Croy socks in the blue striped uh, rag, which I just thought was really cool looking. And I was thinking of doing um, a red uh, heels, toes, and cuffs, but thought that was really pretty. She also found the Patton's Croy socks FX in the camo colors, which is kind of interesting because it's like pink with a bits of blue. So really pleased with that. And then I asked her to get me a neutral. There was only one of the flax colorway, but she grabbed it for me as well. And then, oh no, just came off. We had been talking about the Karen cakes, and so she grabbed uh, two of the, why are you ripping? What is going on here? Two of the red velvet one for me. So um, if you aren't aware of what Karen cakes are, they came out to celebrate um, their 100 year anniversary, and it's just a cake in a self-striping colorway and they'll, they have a couple patterns I'm probably not gonna make the pattern I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but I figured I would probably need two of them because it is worsted so there you go now I did buy my own yarn as I mentioned I didn't buy a lot just two skeins from Lolo did it eventually I'm gonna knit something by her uh, I have so much yarn from her. She's probably, she is the indie dyer that I buy the most from. And I think it's because she just keeps her, her shop really well stocked. So I just, you know, I just buy stuff. But she had posted the burrow, like she'd been knitting it. And that's when I wanted it. She'd come out with this before, but I didn't love it until I saw it knit up. And this is the burrow. So uh, the base is a kind of like a creamy yellow. And then it has red rust right here, some grello right up here, and then this really nice purple. So pretty excited. I um, just had to buy it when this came out. And then uh, as you do, you need to buy two skeins at least. And so I brought, bought Pretty Little Zombies, which I have never purchased before, but it's really pretty. Uh, base is, a, it's more of an off-white with some more grello, uh, some pink, and then a uh, pale blue is right here. I bought them both, I think, on, yeah, both of them are on her plush sock, which is 75% wool, 15% nylon, and 10% tencel. Whew, that took a long time. This video is gonna take forever to upload. The last thing I want to talk about on this chapter is my a novel idea segment and this is an oldie but a goodie not a super oldie but the book I wanted to recommend is The Help uh, and it's by Katherine Stockett and this is what it looks like I want to say this is the original cover they have the movie adaptation cover but I really like this one this is one of the books that I found at the library for a dollar I have read this book and I gave it to my mom to read and um, well I, I purchased it for my mom to read and I saw it and I said you know I want a copy of this book too because I love this uh, I finished I started reading it and I finished this book uh, after I graduated college I was still living in my apartment on campus for like a week after I graduated and this was just oh so good I remember reading outside on the grass uh, so for those of you who may or may not have ever heard of this book this is uh, set in the 1960s in Mississippi and it is about the um, black women who raised white children which I didn't really know was this big thing. Um, I read this book, I was watching Mad Men, and I guess it, it really was what was done. Um, you had a, um, let's, I mean a housekeeper essentially, who, you know, would pick up, pick up after you, clean your house, but also was like your nanny and took care of the children of the house. 
and this book kind of deals with that and how um, you know if you do one thing wrong it it can ruin your life um, as one of these nannies type things and so you have that dynamic and then there is Skeeter who is a she's white uh, they call her a white socialite who uh, came back from college um, but doesn't have a husband and, and this time uh, it was very it was the thing to have a husband you know don't get a job go to college but don't go to college for the degree go to college for the man who will then make you the money so Skeeter uh, is a journalist she that's what she wants to do and she has this breakthrough moment of what if I tell the stories of these powerful black women and most of them don't want to step forward and tell their stories because again this is going to ruin their lives you know if they're honest about the way that they're treated no one's gonna hire them they come into these homes and they are expected to maintain the family secrets even if the family does not treat them well so this book was so powerful and the movie is also really good i i think the movie is really good um so if you you know want to read a book about women and empowerment but at the same time uh not the best time in our history just with the way that we treat uh people of different races and cultures it's it's still it's a really good book i loved it i thought it was really good and there are quite a lot of like reading groups and questions and essays and stuff about this book it is about 530 pages there are parts that will make you laugh like a lot very very hard uh, and then there are parts that just make you really sad for their lives again it is the help by Katherine Stockett and with that this podcast comes to a close uh, it felt like a long one to me and the camera kept stopping don't know why but it did uh, so hopefully all of this made sense but I will see you next time in my next video Oh, I also wanted to mention thanks for everybody who has subscribed I went on YouTube the other day and noticed that there was a hundred people and that's awesome that a hundred people think uh, what I say is entertaining to some point which is really nice it made me feel really good uh, so thank you everybody who has hit that subscribe button and thanks for the people who don't subscribe and just watch that's that's cool too I I definitely, definitely do that. So thank you and I will see you next time. Bye.